Good morning. At the calves this morning, these calves, I'm a little bit concerned they've got a hint of pneumonia. Because the other day there was a lot of coughing, but that was just after I bedded them. So they were kind of fleeing about around there. So they were panting a bit and getting fired up. So right now, as you can see them standing there, there's the odd wee cough, but it's, I think it's all right. There's no runny nose, there's no droopy ears. They're all still eating their grub, no bother. Dad's just coming along to have a wee look as well. Just be on the safe side, but I, th I do think they're all right. It was just the fact that when I bedded them, it was probably a wee bit dusty as well, and they were charging them out the pen. That's when they started coughing a bit. But I guess that's quite natural, especially when the weather's really cold. Like when you're outside and you go for a run on a cold day, you're more kind of coffee. It hits your lungs more. Tempted to think it's more like a wee little, a wee little lick of uh, lungworm, not pneumonia. Anyway, I've taken a few videos. I've sent them to our vet. Um, and I'll see what he's thinking. Dad got this video yesterday of them. This was after they'd been fleeing about a wee bit. So you can see it's a bit more prevalent in them, a bit more, what's the word? A bit more pronounced, a bit more pronounced. That's the word. Baxter's pushing on, he's growing quick. Good boy. Quick diesel pit stop for the Defender and then we're heading off to a cousin of mine who is also called Crawford. I also have an uncle called Crawford. Anyway, we're going to see some cattle sheds. More cattle sheds. And if anyone else has got cattle sheds that you think would suit us, ideas we could take and use, um, then get in touch, comment below or give me an email here um, and I'd love to come and have a look around a few more yards. Just we're trying to get the best plan we can for putting up a cattle shed. Geese flipping geese. They're back. Look at the damn things. What's your estimate? How many are there? I'll assure you them all, someone could count them. Wonder if any of them had bird flu or have bird flu. Case of bird flu's popped up 13 kilometers away from us, which is a wee bit scary. If you're within three kilometers of a bird flu infected zone, there's quite a lot of things you have to do and hoops you have to jump through. If you're within 10 kilometers, there's slightly less, um, it's still a protected zone. But if you're out with 10 kilometers, you just carry on as normal. And we're 13 kilometers. I'm hoping and praying we don't get it. I don't know whether it's settled down at all. I don't think it has. It's still pinging up in places. Aberdeenshire has been hit the hardest in Scotland, I think. I think there's been about 300,000 birds being culled up there. Nightmare. Any new flocks, you can't get insurance for them. I don't think, I think there's the odd insurance company that if they've been with them for a while, they'll, they're still doing insurance, but it's very expensive insurance. It's almost not worth it. If you get hit and you've no insurance, you get hit for the value of the birds, they have to go. You have to pay for two sets of cleaning. And this is just what I've heard, but apparently it's about £60,000 per clean and that was on a 30,000 bird unit or 36,000 bird unit. You have to pay for all the hen pen to be disposed of. I think it's to be buried by someone, I think. Um, oh, it's just an absolute nightmare if you get it. So we're just touching wood, crossing fingers and keeping as biosecure as we can. And that's all we can do. Dad's just taking the food waste there and um, dumping it down the dung midden and then we'll head off and see this cattle shed. Right, we're seeing a spread of bale in action. It's on an articulated forklift, so it's quite good when you're in a central passage to shift about a wee bit and we'll go on our peak. This doesn't chop the straw as much. It kind of just breaks it apart. It doesn't actually cut it, which I think I prefer actually. It means you bring up less muck from below when the cattle are kind of shifting that about, I think. And the cattle will soon shift that about. Right, we're with another Crawford, who is <laughs> also my cousin. We should do a wee podcast of two Crawfords. Like the two Ronnies, but less funny. We're just at a sheds which are converted dairy sheds. Yes. 
Uh, we used to be, what, 10 years ago we were dairy, and now we're seven till pedigree. Uh, so we're just showing Crawford and Ian around the shed about how we how we adapted the shed to to make it into to suckler, and then we're just having to be play with the bedder now as well, a different style of bedder to your teagle. So we've got a spreader wheel that um, on my bendy TM JCB forwards I can spin around. Articulated steering, so it's good for central passes like this because there's it in action. Whereas we wouldn't be able to do this if we had one of these machines on our forklift. So we've got two of these. They're good bits of kit. They do the job, saves me rolling out wheels. But so, they leave it fluffy, they don't leave it like chopped up, they leave it full length. Yeah, so, I, I think that's better It's not when it's not chopped, because yeah. the cows, when it's chopped fine, the cows kind of stomp it in and it brings up stuff below. Yeah, they, these guys, will, you'll last longer. This is, this is like rolling out a bale and going through with a fork. Yeah. That's what this leaves it like. Whereas your chopped better, your, your trailed and, and uh, fine chopped better, just leave it in a big mat on the floor, and the cows get stuff on their backs, and it seems to like, they can end up with barley growing on the backs, I've seen in a really bad shed. Yeah. Um, holes in the wall, this isn't flying holes in the wall with stones going through it. Um, although you do see who's a bad combine driver and who leaves barley on the floor of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> no, I don't drive it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll have a quick peek around the shed, which has been designed by Tom, your stockman. Yes, yeah, ten years ago Tom ripped it apart and did it all. So his design, simple design, and it works really well. I like what, it. One man system. One man system, that's what we're after. <laughs> Right, here's the shed. Uh, go and give us a quick 60 second spin. Uh, 60 second spins, it's scraped passages each side, uh, which helps with straw use. You hopefully use a little bit less straw. Three pens up each side, uh, calf creeps at the top, so the calves can go in there and get away from the cows. And when the bull's in there just now as well, they can get away from the bull. Uh, we feed the calves in the creep, and it comes to spinning time. You just shut the door of it, and that's them, that's them weaned off their mothers. So instantly, it's quite handy. It used to be a cubicle shed. So that was 100 cubicles on that side, 100 cubicles on this side, and then we uh, ripped all them out, flattened the floor, and just made it uh, straw, straw bedded. Here are the bulls in the pens. <laughs> <laughs> in the pens, anyway. So this bull here is homozygous, so yeah. fully pulled calves, no horns. Yeah. Same with that wee one there. Yeah, he's also fully pulled. So he's a bit younger. What, is he uh, 11 he, months he, or so? Is yeah, that what he's he just, said? He's just under a year old. He'll be a year old in March. And he's about, was he 14, 15, 14 uh, months, 14, 15 months? October born. October Last born. Year. So we're just having a wee peek at these bulls. There's another one, two, three there. Heterozygous, so they're 50 yeah. 50. Roughly half your cast will be pulled, half won't be. Um, but these are bull pens, they're good pens. Solid built, they're 20 by 10 foot. Yeah. And what I like about them, these two gates, they swing completely round and round and round. So you can shut bulls back this way, shut them back that way. Crawford, if he is mucking them out, fold that back. Same with the next one, same with the next one, same with the next one. He's never in with any of the bulls if he doesn't want to be. <laughs> Scrape it out with a forklift here and then shut them back this side and do the exact same on the other side with a forklift. Quite good, those hinges where they just go 360 round and round and round. And handling facilities. So, like we said earlier with um, the scrape passes that goes all the way around, you shut gates off there and you can run anything down right down here and round the corner and into the handling facilities here where they've got crush up the top uh, a good long line of kind of narrow pens so if you're dozing along the backs you can get quite a few done at a time you can get like six cows in there uh -huh. and all so you've got three sliding gates one of them's got a way cell on it and then the crush at the front of that and it's a loading bay at the far end straight in that one line you can just run them all down the race up until they're in away so did this just do the parlor yeah so this blue wall was the parlor uh, and then the cows used to go, they'd come in that door, uh -huh. out that door, sorry, back to the field, uh, and they'd come out of here into another pen, other, other than that. That used to, used to be as, as wide as this. Yeah. That pen. I think it was a 12 24 for those dairy fans. <laughs> <laughs> Full wood, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, but this was, uh, we've now been Simmentals for 12 years, so it's been a while since we've, since we've been dairy. Oh, well, that's it. Tour of the shed. Thank you, Crawford. No worries. And Tom, the stockman, who designed all this. He's Cheers a big for the fan. tour. <laughs> big fan. So is Crawford, aren't you? Aye. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I even subscribe. If family, if family don't watch, then who does? So, big thanks, Tom and Crawford, for giving us a spin round. Tom is a stockman there and designed the shed when they converted it from a dairy. Made it a one man show so he can do everything himself if he needs to. Everything's controlled in the shed. You don't need to take any stock outside. He's done quite a lot of good things in there which we'll take on board like gate heights and handling facilities and 
spools and pen sizes and how gates swing. It's quite interesting to just have a think about all those things and yeah, it's quite a lot of ideas. So thank you very much, Tom, and thank you very much, Crawford. This is the similar machine that you saw earlier on. One spool valve required, different style of front, not a horizontal, vertical. Just a small one. Just takes round bales or small short heston bales. You only get six feet. Float it down. Sorry, I'm having to steer with my elbow. Final bit of the bale, you just tip the machine forward a bit. I'm um, probably tipped too far forward now, it's jamming. When you jam it, you just roll the roll it back a fraction. And that, just a quick flick back. Weeding in the straw. Up the rocksters. Half up my knee. Half up my shin. <laughs> up to my knee. And that'll all just fall off them and then they end up nice and clean. That'll do them for two days, easily. Right, it's vet time for you, pal. Second jabs. We've just had him in the vet. He's all fired up. He's had his jabs. Yes. What are you saying? Oi! Hey, where are you going? Hmm. What are you saying? What are you saying, big man, Paul? Yeah. So we'll give him a week and he can see other dugs. And he's good to go. He's found where the biscuits are. Oi! <laughs> you little bandit! Right, let's yoke this thing up again. These cats are needing bedded. We'll get a few bales into them. Right, we're yoked up. We'll get these three bales loaded up. One at a time, we'll probably only need the two actually. To drop this lever. Uh, kind of a two handed job. There we go, just means the bales can get in the front there. I cut these strings all in the wrong places, so it's pulling the knots around the back of that bale. It's winding me up. Turn the bed on. We're off. Right, that's the first half of the bale. And then you just, the second half is lying on the back of that bed that I'm shifting. See that bit of bale just disappear as it draws in. That's that bale gone, obliterated. Put this down again. This, just like a forklift bucket, it's got a knife on it. So it's got a replaceable part if you if you wear through that, you don't wear the body of the machine, you're actually just, you replace the, the knife on it. You can see, just a wee short plate there. See where the shiny metal is, how it wears. Let's see if I can not make a meal of this, the string this time. Ah, yeah, bloody hell. Filled this up, but um, there has been a van come into the shed and it has now got a big ding in it after hitting right there. Uh, right, bail number two is in, we'll get the second half done here. I can't quite make it into that corner. Voila, happy goose. See them with their straw all over them. Someone did suggest you could get a, a cow brush and then they'd go and brush it all off. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to get a cow brush. They're not cheap though. That's the way to do it. You clean my back, I'll clean yours. When I saw that spready bale earlier, what I th my thought process was when they put the straw out, it doesn't chop it. So that machine, the Teagle, it actually chops the straw into finer pieces, smaller pieces. Um, and that's good for picking up the dung when you're taking it out, when you're getting rid of it, because it breaks apart easy. It's good for spreading it, it breaks it down a wee bit quicker. The downside to that, in my mind, is because it is chopped and it's finer, when the cows kind of stand on it and push it about, 
it pushes apart more or, or it spreads apart easier so the, the dirty dung from below can get up again. Whereas I think with a spread bale or when you're rolling out bales, the straw stays in long pieces. So when the cattle stand and push it about, it's more of a mat which stops any dirty dung coming up from below. I think the likes of a spread a bale versus that, I think the spread a bale straw would last a bit longer than this chopped straw, but wouldn't be as good to spread, wouldn't be as loose to pick up and move when you're getting rid of it. And also spread a bale, I think we'd need an articulated forklift probably to make that work in our system. We'll put a shed up anyway before we think about buying a bedder. We're not really gonna think about buying a bedder until we've got our shed done and complete. We get into a bit of a routine and then figure out exactly what's gonna work in the shed because we've not finished designing the shed. We've, until you have a final design and you build the thing, you don't really know how each kind of a bedder like this or spread a bale or whatever's gonna suit your own system or a bedder at all. I must say a big thank you to Davey from Teagle for giving us the machine for the whole Christmas and New Year. It's been really handy get us into the kind of idea of a bedder and how that works in the system. It's been really handy and he actually nipped out over Christmas even though he's on his holidays to sort the wiring on it. So big thanks Davey. If you're interested in finding out more about the machines or demo for yourself, uh, email Davey down here. Silage bin's been overflowing since I've been away. There we go. You can soon get rid of it when you put some pressure on it. Uh, door still works. Just. Yeah, bloody hell. You can see what happened. I had the forklift sitting here at one point and I was sorting out the strings on the bales and someone who shall not be named, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, caught that edge because they were watching the front right corner on where the forklift was sitting. That's today's mishap.